today's video, we're gonna be checking out the diamonds. Select Muppets, select this Miss Piggy, Foo Foo, and the Penguin. Okay, let's figure out how tall these are. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to use my trusty tape measure. Miss Piggy stands at about four and a half inches in height. The Penguin, a little bit smaller, stands three and a quarter inches in height. And her little tiny dog, Foo Foo, stands roughly one and a quarter inches in height. They come with their fair share of accessories. Let's have a look at those right now. First things first, she gets herself a Miss Piggy star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Looks actually quite nice. Has a nice texturing to it, and you can see the star is elevated from the rest of the surface, exactly like how the stars appear on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The only thing I would say is uh, because Miss Piggy doesn't have a display stand, nor does she have really the suitable means to stay upright. She tends to fall over a lot. What they could have also done with the Hollywood Walk of Fame is put like a little peg. It's a little peg right by the star. So you could have actually have taken Miss Piggy and attached her to the stand. One of two things would have happened. Then the figure would have not had a problem of uh, falling over. And, uh, you know, you're also making use of something that uh, would be uh, something that people would be walking on anyways. I put a little peg right there. That being said, though, the uh, again, the star looks pretty good, I have to admit. There's the underside of it. She also, <laughs> she also comes with Moi Magazine, featuring Fufu on the front. In this issue, Moi, Moi, and More Moi, style and fashion guru, and Gloria squeaks out. There's also a picture of Miss Piggy lounging. She looks like she has a bunch of servant frogs One's fanning her. That's lovely. And then on the, the back, attract that special frog, Deadly Fashion. Um, it is just cardboard. It's, you know, so, I mean, it, it's a gloss cardboard. I'll give it that. But uh, longevity of something like this won't really last the test of time. I do appreciate that they always include, like, NECA does this. Diamond Select includes this, like little cardboard inserts. But, I mean, these things never really last. But it's nice that they, they include that, though. She also gets a mirror, which has absolutely no reflective surfaces on it whatsoever. It defeats the purpose of being a mirror, but instead they, they instead put a silver paint on the interior there, I guess to mimic that of a, an actual mirror. And then the handle as well as the outer frame of the mirror is in gold. Looks good, she just can't really use it as a, as a true mirror. Gets a picture of Kermit the Frog. There's the back of it. Uh, once again, no uh, no tables, no nothing like that. I suppose I never really looked at these versus the Palisades Muppets. I mean, although those were ones I would have loved to have picked up, but simply just to cost them nowadays. But I mean, they had these elaborate sets. Um... So, I mean, you know, if you had one of those, I suppose you could put the, f the frames and other artifacts such as that on top of the desk. Love to get the Palisades stuff eventually, but again, just the prices are incredibly expensive. Also got a dog dish. You can tell that by the fact that there's a bone on the front. The silver paint has carried a little bit over into the dish itself, but other than that, dish looks pretty good. It's got these little jewels, I'm, I'm guessing, around the bottom area. She does spoil her dog, after all. Nothing on the inside, but a nice little accompanying piece for her little puppy, Fufu. And she does also come with the leash, which I have to admit, of all the accessories, this is the one of the more uh, disappointing aspects. For starters, while it is a soft plastic, I almost feel as if a wire-framed plastic would have worked a little bit better, because then you could have actually manipulated it. It is awfully thick, and equally so, it's very hard to get her to hold it because of the ball, this little ball peg on the end here. And you also can't seem to get it around the dog very easily as well. Cue the look at Fufu. 
I always loved Fufu in the Muppet show because the dog always seemed very clueless. The dog here also seems clueless, but in a very, very cute way. Uh, it seems like it's rather been painted in white instead of uh, cast in white plastic. It just feels like it's got a little bit more of a, like a cakiness to it, something that you would get with paint. Uh, eyes, very nicely done. Mouth, also nicely done. But you can't actually get the leash over its head. Uh, what I've ended up having to do was take the head off. I'm certain this is the only way that you can do this. Put the the leash around its neck where its severed head now was. And then replace the head. Because as you can see, the ears kind of get in the way of putting the leash around its head. Ultimately, this is how you're going to have to do it. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned with Miss Piggy, it's very difficult for her to hold it. For starters, the way that the leash is angled you have to almost angle her hand down and then it's supposed to kind of just clamp in between her thumb and her finger but it's such a big broad peg ultimately it just kind of sits like that but then again what ends up happening is the poor dog gets hung you'll have to kind of angle the hand downward and you almost have to bring the you have to almost have to turn the leash around and just attach it very, very gingerly, just like, well, just quite almost like, like that. I mean, it just, it's very awkward. It's a pain in the butt, in all honesty, to get it into her hand. Um, but it does fit eventually. If you have enough patience, perseverance, you can get it into her hand. Sometimes it's actually easier if you stand the figure and have the dog on a flat surface and then just kind of push up on the leash to get her into her hand. But then you balance, then you have a balancing act you have to do with a figure you hope doesn't topple over. Let's move Fufu aside. And actually, while we're at it, Fufu does have head articulation. It doesn't really hinge up and down, but it does rotate all the way around. And there's Fufu. Okay, so let's talk, we'll talk the penguin next. I actually quite like the penguin, quite indeed. It does have some arm articulation. You can hinge the arms outward. They creak, they squeak. So be very careful when rotating them. The head also rotates, which I quite like. Paint is very clean on the penguin, minus the little hair that was on the top there. It's got a little bit of a texturing added to it as well, so it's not a very smooth looking piece and I especially like the fact that even like the feathers have a, a nice little texturing effect to it. They certainly could have phoned it in and just given us a PVC penguin with zero little to no posability. Instead they give us some posable arms and head so I appreciate that. And uh, again I quite like the penguin. Moving on to Miss Piggy, I guess the star of the show by her own right. Uh, going quickly to talk about this, no, I'm not doing this intentionally to show you the under of her skirts, but I wanted to point out the fact that she does have no peg holes on the undersides of the feet. What little footprint this poor figure gets between the front area of her foot, which I might also add is not completely flat. I don't know if you can see that or not, but not only is it kind of bubbly, but it curves upward. And then on top of that, you've got only just this back heel to support her. So she is very, very tricky to stand. A display stand could have gone a long way, but then granted, uh, even if you had a display stand, you'd need also suitable peg holes on the undersides of her feet, which unfortunately Miss Piggy does not possess. Nice looking figure, I have to admit though, both between the sculpt of the face, the sculpt also of the hair. This is one fine looking Miss Piggy. Paint generally is quite clean on the figure. I don't really have too many gripes. Maybe perhaps the belt seems a little on the splotchy side, but other than that, it looks pretty good. Got this one little hair, get lost hair. It looks like it was attached to the figure's palm here. Uh, speaking of palms though, she does have a ring on one hand, it looks like a ruby stone. And then she also has a diamond bracelet on the other hand. Not to mention a pearl necklace, necklace around her neck here. I suppose we could talk a little bit about the arms, the torso, the cut in her dress, and her face. Um, they've done a pretty good job of matching the three colors together, but it does seem like the arms and the torso, this part right here, seems like it's a slightly different shade than her face. 
again, it's close enough that it's not too much of a, a too much of a problem, but it is something that it does look like it's slightly off from one another. Again, the face is really nicely done. You can even see that they paint in the tongue, the little areas, slots in her nose, little nostrils, I suppose. And uh, she also has the very glistening sort of eyes. Very full eyelashes also, I might add. And again, a nice little texture on the hair. The downside to the fact that all of this does quite well, it does really limit all posability on the head. Um, the head is stiff, the head doesn't seem to want to move. I can hinge it up and down a little bit, but even if I was able to rotate the head, you can see that the front areas of her hair would pretty much prevent any sort of movement from the head because it would automatically start hitting the shoulder area here. She also gets a waist swivel. Uh, arms hinge outward. They're not restricted at all. Uh, the arms do rotate, but again, like you're really going to be starting to hit hair eventually. You uh, you may not be able to do too, too much there. The, uh, the arms rotate. She has a bend in the elbow. Which I, if I can get in there, bend at the elbow. This one elbow bends a little bit easier than this elbow here. She also has a rotation and hinge in the hand. No, by the way, no interchangeable hands on this one. No way. Hinges on the legs. Softer plastic on the lower dress. She does have a bend at the knee, which also allows the lower, very <clears throat> thick legs to allow those to rotate. And she does also have a hinge. Ankle pivot slightly is there. Um, even though whatever posability you may be able to get out of her, uh, still, again, the balancing act of Miss Piggy commences the moment you put this figure down on a shelf. Been pretty good so far, but then when you start incorporating the very rigid, non-forgiving leash is perhaps where you may have problems with Miss Piggy here. Miss Piggy is an otherwise pretty good-looking figure from a sculpt level. Uh, unfortunately, execution-wise, things such as a slight balancing issue can be a bit of a problem because her feet aren't flat enough. Her flat her flat feet instead are exchanged with slightly curved shoes and between that and what little footprint that they get on a surface she does have problems from time to time to stand. I think they could have really made use of the Miss Piggy star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame as perhaps a makeshift display stand although that would also involve this figure having some peg holes on the undersides of her feet which sadly she does not have. The only other problem I have with the figure is that she just doesn't have interchangeable hands. One hand is relegated to doing all the work. She can hold the frame, the mirror, and the leash all in one hand. The other hand being just a relaxed palm really doesn't do all that much. And uh, even in final looks, I've got her holding Fufu, but I barely got the figure holding Fufu. Instead, the, the dog is really just balancing itself on top of her hand. Maybe an extra interchangeable hand could have gone a long way as well. Still, for Muppet fans out there, this definitely be a figure that you may want to add to your collection. Today, we were having a look at the Diamond Select Muppets collectible action figure of Miss Piggy, her little dog Fufu, and a penguin. If you guys would also like to go back and have a look at some of the other Muppet reviews that I've done on this channel, simply go to the Diamond Select Muppets playlist on this channel and you'll be able to check out all those and watch at your viewing pleasure. Make sure as well you subscribe to this channel as well because after all there's going to be more and more videos coming on here and you never want to miss a beat when new stuff gets popped up. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.